interesting video on Wild Rift. Today we're back with another tier list for patch 2.4a and this time it's for the jungle. So we have already done one for the Baron lane. Now just to recap or as a gentle reminder in case you guys haven't actually seen that one, we're gonna actually focus on solo queue and not take into account any kind of competitive play or duo queue or trio queue because it's just the, the easiest way to make the tier list is just for solo queue. So we're only gonna, this tier list is only gonna be uh, for solo queue. So, of course, if you guys uh, like the tier list so far and you guys like my videos, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you guys have not yet done so, don't forget to check out the previous tier list on the Baron Lane, which I will uh, put up in the cards above. So without further ado, let's quickly jump into this tier list where I'm going to be talking in detail about every single jungle pick. So, first up at the very tippy top is Kha'Zix. Now, Kha'Zix is already very good, but the issue is he has to be played properly. So, in solo queue, it's really, uh, Kha'Zix is really strong. The main reason is that there's no coordination, so it's really easy to get isolated targets, really easy to get yourself snowballing, and very easy to just get super duper fat to the point where you can basically, uh, Basically, one Q is going to be doing more than half of, of your enemies of the enemy's health, uh, assuming the enemy is not like a full tank, which is the real reason why Kha'Zix is good. Now, Kha'Zix's main uh, strength, strength is in the early and mid game before people start grouping because when team fights happen, it's a little bit hard to get isolated targets. But ever since they buff his isolation radius um, down from 300 to 200, even in team fight, it is possible to get all five uh, targets isolated. But then it just becomes the skill. Um, knowing when to go in and who to target. So Kha'Zix can still team fight. So Kha'Zix is basically just straight up the best. Now Lee Sin, honestly I feel like is underpicked a lot, but brings a lot of val value to the team. So obviously he has a really strong early game, and he has a lot of skill expression. So his early game is pretty much unmatched. He probably has the best early game um, in the game, possibly uh, unless he's one on one against Zinja. I think Zinja wins against Lee Sin one on one. Uh, but other than that, his ganks are, are amazing and uh, he does have a lot of utility to his team, especially with his Dragon Rage kick to uh, get a pick onto the enemy team. The only issue is that he kind of falls off quite a bit in the late game because um, everybody outskills him, but he, uh, he of course still has that utility to kick someone into his team or away from his team. So, now down to the S tier, now we have Graves after his uh, 2.4 buffs and 2.4 A nerfs. But Graves, of course, as I mentioned in the top main video, he still has three viable builds, uh, including the the uh, Bloodthirster build, which is a little bit more common in the jungle. So Graves is still doing really well for himself. He has one of the fastest, if not the fastest clear, I think he might have the fastest clear um, in uh, the, the jungle. And he also hard counters uh, someone like a Master Yi, which, we'll, which we're gonna get into later. And um, in low elo, Master Yi is definitely the most highly picked jungler. And even in like higher elo, like I'm in Emerald now, I still see Master Yi like every alternate game. Even though by by the time you get to Emerald, pe junglers should know how to take advantage of Master Yi by now. So Graves is really good at taking advantage of Master Yi because he can stack his armor, stack his grit uh, on his... Uh, on his E, and when you face off with him, like at the skull uh, fight or whatever, you will you will just destroy him. So next we have Camille. So now Camille, as we all know, her clear is not the best, and her ganks rely on her E and her ult, which of course just got nerfed. So her ult cooldown got increased, and her E stun got uh, duration got decreased. So that uh, definitely is a whack to Camille jungle. However, Camille jungle, of course, if you are good at Camille, Camille jungle is still going to be very good. You're not going to be focusing on the farm. You're just going to be focusing on the ganks. Uh, so you're pretty much just a, a gank ganking machine. So she's still going to be really uh, doing really well. And of course, as mentioned in the Berlin video, her damage didn't actually get uh, changed. So her Q is just going to hurt just as much as before. So Zen Zhao, I feel is a really underrated jungler, but he has a very, very strong early game, really strong ganks in the early game as well, and very strong dueling potential. I believe that Zen Zhao wins against um, everybody one-on-one, -on -one, other than possibly Kha'Zix because of the isolation. I believe uh, Zen Zhao can even beat Camille one-on-one, -on -one, uh, unless the Camille is really, really very skillful, because Camille has way more upplay potential than Zen Zhao. Zen Zhao is a pretty uh, easy champion to play. So it's also really good for people in the lower elo to play Zen Zhao because he's a lot easier to pick up. But even in high elo, he is still really strong. 
and he's just really strong in team fights as a tank with his ultimate, even if you're not necessarily building tank items. So Xin Zhao brings a lot of value to his team. Now we move on to Master Yi, who has moved up from what was like the F tier to now what is the S tier. Now, honestly, in low elo, he's probably like S plus plus tier because no one really knows how to handle Master Yi. But Master Yi now has a power spike at two items. After you get like a Navori Quick Blade and a Solari Charge Blade, Master Yi actually already hits his power spike and he can't already like destroy people. So he doesn't have to wait for a late game where he has like four items to start destroying people. Now at two items he can destroy people. So he has like a two item power spike where he goes just insane. And you know he's kind of like a face roll champion. It does take skill to actually play Master Yi because you have to time your alpha strikes and all to play him optimally. But even for someone who doesn't really know how to play him properly, you can just face roll and pretty much just carry with Master Yi unless your opponents are really good. Of course Master Yi's main weakness is CC so picking a lot of CC against the Master Yi is very very ideal. However, despite him being this good, I cannot in good faith put him in, in the S plus tier or put him any higher on the S tier. The reason is despite the uh, 2.4 item changes and the buffs he got in 2.4a which were insane by the way he still has incredibly weak first cut and incredibly weak early game now every single jungler above him can and should be invading a master Yi. Kha'Zix can easily get into Master Yi's jungle which is what I do all the time when I play Kha'Zix and easily solo kill him because he's isolated Lee Sin can do the same Graves can do the same Camille can do the same as well as well as Xin Zhao so pretty much Master Yi loses 1-1 one -on -one to all the junglers above him and if the junglers above him are being played by the enemy team correctly, they will invade Master Yi. So it is really hard to play Master Yi in the early game but if the enemy jungler makes the mistake of not invading you, you basically have a free pass to your 2 item power spike and with some opportune ganks um, to get like a kill or two, you can hit your power spikes really fast and you can just take over the game with it where pretty much no one can really do um, anything about it, pretty much. So next we move on to the A tier, where we have Wukong. So Wukong, of course, his, his main purpose is that giant team fight ultimate. So he does really well into team fights, really well into ganks after level 5. So that's the real reason why he's there. Now Gragas, he's there for the same reason as the Baroning. He can go for uh, AP, tank, or hybrid. And he also has a lot of team fight tools, a lot of utility, like his body slam, like his cask, you know, a lot of um, just tools. So he's just really good uh, in general. Now Vi and Jarvan, they are both uh, pretty much just ganking junglers. So Vi has her has her uh, Q and her alt uh, to gank, and Jarvan has his uh, flag and drag uh, with his cataclysm ultimate uh, for the ganks. But he they are both. Really good at ganking. The only issue with the both of them is that both of these picks are very team re team reliant, whereas the picks in the S plus and the S tier are not. And to 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 quite a large extent, Ukong and uh, Ukong is also pretty team reliant. And Gragas, if you go for the non AP build, is also team reliant. So the basically the H tier are very good junglers, but you have to rely on your team. And of course, being a solo queue environment, that is not really what we want to see. So Ukong. Uh, Vi and Jarvan, they're, they're really good at ganks, but of course your team has to follow up, your team has to do something. It's very unlikely you can solo kill them unless they're already like pretty low. And even later on, if you get fed, likely you will need help to take down take down people unless you are really, really that fed and the enemy team is really that behind. But if not, you'll need help. So you need help from your team, and that's why they're team reliant, so they can't really be too much higher. Now into the B tier. Now Rengar has fallen quite a bit. Um, even before his 2.4a nerfs, he already, I feel, wasn't really the best uh, jungler. Of course, he is just a assassin who can pretty much just one-shot anybody. Of course, one-shotting on the enemy ADC could be crucial, but honestly, if you look at uh, what all the junglers above him all does, they really bring so much more to the table, and Kha'Zix is 10 times better of an assassin than Rengar at the moment. So really, the Rengar pick isn't really very good. Of course, he is a hard carry solo queue jungle, I, jungler if you are very good at Rengar, so that is something to consider, but I don't rate Rengar too highly, honestly. So, on to Olaf and Fizz. So, Olaf uh, honestly has really fallen from, from grace, although he can really like 1v1 people very well. I just feel like he doesn't really bring any anything to the table that, that is honestly really useful. Like, he's really good at 
uh, one-on-one duels, and he's just pretty much good, very good at ignoring CC and just running straight at the enemy team, but ignoring CC is his main specialty, but honestly, if you see what everybody else can bring to the table, like just look at the A tier with all their CC, Olaf doesn't really have CC except the slow on his on his um, Q, so he really doesn't bring any any like CC to the table, he doesn't have any assassination potential, and you know, he, he just uh, he's just not really that good, honestly. Whereas Fizz, Fizz, I've talked about this a lot. I think B tier might be a little bit generous. He might even be C tier, but uh, they nerfed his alt cooldown. They nerfed um, his jungle clear, and his jungle clear is the main uh, main thing that brings him down. So his um, passive damage onto jungle monsters used to be two hundred percent. Now it's only hundred and twenty percent. So his jungle clear. I already feel wasn't the best even when he was at 200%, but now it's at 120%, his jungle clear is abysmal. So I, I think you, you clear way too slow and you're a level 5 ganking jungler, really predictable you're gonna gank at level 5 if you're a fish. So for our enemy teams not paying attention, that, that should be uh, an easy gank to predict, especially if you're in a stunning position. And also, his ultimate cooldown got increased, so uh, he will have it up less often. So overall, I don't really think Fizz jungle is that good anymore. But even worse is Evelyn jungle. So Evelyn used to sit at like the top, like at the S plus tier, but honestly, after she's gotten nerfed so many times, they pretty much took away like, everything that made her good, like her her ability to steal um, jungle monsters, her ability to execute champions who are low. Pretty much the only thing she has going for her now is her invisibility, which they haven't actually put any control wards in the game yet. If they did put any control wards in the game, she would just be completely gone and fall even far further down the tier list so Evelyn uh, honestly doesn't bring too much to the table um, the only thing she does bring to the table though is the fact that she's AP because if you look at the t entire tier list above the only other person who is AP is uh, Gragas and Fizz and of course we covered that Fizz is not good so pretty much the only uh, viable ish AP jungle is um, Gragas and you might Actually, sometimes want to pick Evelyn over Gragas depending on the situation. Like you might actually need an assassin, or or they might actually have a very squishy combo. Evelyn is good, uh, better I should say into, um. But yeah, Shivana is just a farming level five jungler who just pretty much just power farms her way through. Her ganks are all right, but she relies way too much on her dragon farm, and she has also fallen from grace, so she's not just really not that good. Now we have Fiora and Riven jungle, which has been cropping up a lot. Um, more often recently, and in pro play there have been Fiora jungles as well, but honestly, Fiora jungle personally, I have no idea why it is even a thing. She doesn't have a very particularly fast jungle clear, she doesn't take advantage of her passive um, her, um, to prop the, the weak points on enemy champions in, in the jungle, because it obviously doesn't apply to jungle monsters. Uh, she doesn't have a, a fast jungle clear or anything, the only reason why I think that Fiora jungle is a thing is just because Fiora is so OP that if you pick Fiora in the jungle, you can pick something else in the Baron lane that is OP as well. Like for example, you can pick like a Gragas tank in the Baron lane with a Fiora jungle, um, something like that. But honestly, I have no idea why Fiora jungle is really a thing. I don't think that it's particularly good. I think it's just because of the fact that Fiora is so OP as a champion that, that teams just want to squeeze her in so they start playing her in the jungle role. So yeah, Raven jungle is probably slightly better than Fiora jungle, although I put her a little bit lower because Riven as a champion probably is a bit weaker than Fiora. So, Riven jungle doesn't really have the best clears as well. Honestly, doesn't really have the best ganks unless you use your flash because it's really hard. Um, she does have a lot of mobility, but her dashes are all very small, so it's very hard to gap close after you're seen because the enemy team is going to be hightailing it away from you. So, she doesn't really have the best ganks. But if you're a very, very skilled Riven player and you like didn't get your Riven uh, top, you can of course play Riven jungle. I believe it's still going to work out, but this Riven jungle probably isn't the best uh, in the jungle role itself. Now, Pantheon, we've covered it. This uh, Pantheon is pretty bad. <laughs> um, he just uh, he just pretty much doesn't really have anything going for him. His his supposed strength is a strong early game, but you know there are so much better strong early game champions like like uh, Lee Sin, Xin Zhao, and even Kha'Zix. So uh, Pantheon just doesn't really have a place uh, in the meta at the moment. Amumu, horrible uh, first kill, very easy to get uh, invaded. But other than that, he he has a very good team fight with his uh, Chris of the Set Mummy ultimate. But his just horrible um, clear and horrible dueling potential just brings him down. Trindamir, um, not too not the worst, but honestly he's better in the Baron lane uh, at the moment because of his new build. Of course you can go for the same build in your jungle, but it is very expensive, so it's very hard to get to your item breakpoints. So he's not really that good in the jungle. Mundo, 
um, not really that good in the jungle either. I think he's better in the Baron thing. He doesn't really have a very fast uh, clear or, or anything like that. So I don't really think uh, Mundo Jungle is very good. Don't really have strong ganks either. And for Jax. Now Jax is a pretty interesting one because he did get a huge buff. But I rated him so lowly in the D tier. Now the reason for that is that I feel that Jax in the jungle had really no change because you can only stack up your passive onto minions or champions. It doesn't work on monsters, so it doesn't actually change um, how Jax works in the, in the jungle at all. So Jax is still in the D tier. Um, he does have relatively alright ganks, but if you wanted to have good ganks, you can just rely on other ganking champions like, you know, Vi and Jarvan and Camille. Why, why would you pick Jax? Um, Jax... It's like more like a, his role is more of like a split pusher anyway. He's not like a hard solo carry, so you wouldn't really pick him over the rest. Ramus only very good into like full AD teams, and he's pretty bad. One of the worst jungle clears, and it just kind of nerfed his defenses as well. Although they did buff his, I believe his W, but Ramus is just bad. Akshan jungle um, clear is pretty bad. Um, yeah, clear his clear is really pretty bad. The only what only reason why people are playing it in concept is because. If you're in the jungle and you find a scoundrel on the map, you can easily rotate to the scoundrel to try to take them down. But honestly, Akshan is an ADC who needs a lot, or uh, rather a, a marksman mid laner um, who needs a lot of farm. And he's not going to get enough farm from the jungle to get to his item break points. And even when he does get there, he isn't too strong in general. So in the jungle, he's just even worse. Timo jungle, horrible clear, really bad. Um, Nas is really hard to stack in the jungle. And Malphite... Horrible slow clear in the jungle, so that pretty much covers it for the jungle tier list. And we will move on to the mid lane in the future. So, thanks for watching the video, guys, and goodbye.